feel it's fair to give you warning that there will be a lot of editing done on this because I die quite frequently. Moving on to the first puzzle. You're surrounded by these sparkly bastards. And this is basically just a movement puzzle. You just wait until a spot clears and you move in. And you do not touch the fudge pops. Because if you do that, uh, they get thrown off of their line, they start flying all over the map, and it just makes it infinitely harder to be able to get through this unscathed. This puzzle, however, is about speed. These bastards are going to be coming after you the entire time. And you have to kick the ice block forward to destroy them and knock out the cylinder and move on. But if you're not moving fast enough, you'll see that they start spawning behind you. They will catch up, they will freeze you, and they will kill you. So just wait until both of them are lined up with your ice block, knock it into them, repeat. You'll probably die on it once or twice, but once you know what's coming, it's really easy to deal with. Now this is kind of similar to the first puzzle in that we have more of those spark things, except this time we do want to grab these fudge pops. Not only because it makes the path a little shorter, but it also diverts these things off of their original paths. See how that one circled back and now it's just kind of stuck there? That's why getting the fudge pops is a good thing. Although you do want to keep moving as you do this because there uh, are one or two that will start coming back up the path. And there's this one. You're going to have all these turrets firing at you at once. Well, I say at once, but there is a sequence to it. You want to move fast when you do this. you got to freeze these guys on the side, kick them down, and form a barrier to protect yourself from these turret shots. Make sure you keep those frozen. Kick these into the sides. And the turrets on top fire just slow enough that you can move in and grab these dream bags without trouble. Ugh, that was close. And now that we've done that, we move back to another puzzle where we don't really do much of anything other than knock down some ice pillars. Now this is another timing thing where you gotta wait for the right time so you can move around these uh, spiny things. And this is just something I do, but it's a major help. Drop the ice cylinder behind you once it's passed. That way you don't have to concern yourself with it uh, as you move on to the next puzzle. And there we go. This is fairly simple compared to the other puzzles in Toyland. Now we're going to do this real quick. Move in, and block. <coughs> it's going to be on the left, and drop straight down for the final dream bag. From this point on is when you're going to notice that I'm starting to make more cuts because, well, I died a lot. This puzzle in particular brings back the spring element. And I will admit there are some times where I make this a little harder than it has to be. Now you're noticing that these tiles are in place in the position that we would originally need to kick the ice block in order to form a bridge to those final two dream bags. Well, what we need to do is get this ice block going on these springs and then when it's in the right place, use the ice cylinder to stop it and form a bridge to the dream bag. Now that's all well and good for this one, but as you can see, the tiles are blocking us from being able to kick it to the other side so we can form another bridge for that dream bag. And that was entirely pointless. Well, what we have to do is, you see how there's one little square in front of the spawn point? You have to freeze it and start making a bridge over to the other side. That way, you can lure one of the noggles over to the other set of springs, kick them across that, and form a bridge to the final dream bag. Ugh. These things are kind of a pain in the ass to get going in the right direction. Ugh. Okay, I'm just gonna wait. There we go. 
And now, if you stay up there, it should move into this bridge that you start forming, making it a little easier to form this. Okay, we are almost there. By the way, it is possible, actually, to use these springs in the upper uh, left hor facing horizontally to simply uh, stop an ice block there, kick it across horizontally, stop it there, and then go uh, vertically with it. But, even though this takes a little more time, I think it's a little easier to do. And there's less risk of you accidentally, you know, dying. Ah, uh, I screwed that up. And the thing is, if you are going to do this method, you have to keep an eye on your time, because I am very quickly running out of it. Alright, drop the ice pillar, make the bridge, and we're out of here. Okay, that's odd. I never really counted stockings as toys, more so just decorations. But, we see that uh, the palace is actually hidden within the realm of the Wizard King. And that this one is unusually confident that we will be able to... Yeah, my boy! Whatever. And that guy's fairly confident we can do it. Personally, I wouldn't invest that much hope in this kid. As now we hit another hammer-related puzzle. Okay, obviously one dream bag here, and the fudge pops at this point kind of act as an indicator of what you're supposed to do, although this one is fairly obvious. You'll notice here that you gotta move it down like that, and we can form the bridge here. And now we have to form the bridge to the final dream bag, which... Alright, I'm just gonna leave this one to you. Watch what the hammer is doing and tell me what I have to do. And while you do that, I am going to read the nutrition facts for this box of spree. Let's see. Amount per serving. Let's see. Calories, 50. Zero grams of fat. Zero milligrams of sodium. 13 grams of carbohydrates. 13 grams of sugars. Zero protein. Okay. Here is what we do. We gotta wait for one of these guys to form an ice block for that annoying little ro uh, raccoon thing to get out of the way. And then when it starts doing this, when it moves vertically, move in and knock the hammer away. There's actually a similar... Uh, this is kind of similar to a puzzle that we saw earlier where we had to move around hammers, but... Here's where things start to get a little more complex. In this puzzle, we're going to have one of those little birds that can move blocks around in the middle. And, we somehow have to use him in order to form a bridge to this top section of the island. Now, one thing I have done right so far is form those little individual sections on the opposite sides here. Now, what we have to do is form an ice cylinder on these sections that we formed on the far ends. And now here's the slightly more complex part. What we have to do here is freeze one of these noggles, and then kick it over to the other side, and then once we've done that, replace it with an ice cylinder. Then move to the opposite noggle, freeze it, and kick it toward the ice pillar that we just formed. And then once we do that, as you're going to see here, Doing this is going to kill the bird, but it will respawn. We have to drop the ice cylinder, destroy this thing, and move into the bottom section, which I just screwed up, so that you can kick the ice block up and form a bridge to the next island. Alright, now that I've explained what to properly do, let's see if I can actually do it right this time. Ah, god damn it. You see, this is easy to explain, not so easy to actually pull off all the time. Alright, we are in position. So, let's go ahead and freeze the noggle, kick it over. 
drop the pillar, kill this thing, move into the bottom section, and we are golden. Oh shit, gotta look out for the spiky thing. Alright. Now, we have seen the birds that kick around the blocks. We have seen puzzles involving moving blocks along springs. And now we're going to see both at the same time. Only this time it's going to be made even more complicated because these knights that can reflect your ice blasts are going to be here too. So, freeze it and get it moving toward this center section. Start moving it up and down along these springs. Be very careful not to get hit by it. We're going to move it over to this horizontal spring and then move in toward that top section. But you gotta be careful that you don't do it while that knight is looking at you. Otherwise it'll charge and you will die. I'm gonna freeze it just for convenience sake. And that forms the bridge for this dream bag. Now we've gotta go back and do the same thing except move it toward the other side. Okay, we've got it moving up and down. Now I've gotta move up from here. Be careful not to get spotted by the knight. Kick it to the left. Move up, and then kick it down, and we are off of this island. Well, this section of the island at least. And since hammers were left out of this stage, we are going to see plenty of them in this one. The catch is, in this stage, if you screw up the order of the hammers, you have to suicide and start the level over again. So, you start from the top hammer, and work your way down. Now we're gonna grab these dream bags and move off to the side, let these things pass through, and then trap them again for convenience sake. Now we have to go for that second hammer down. That'll form a bridge across that gap, and then we go to the lowest noggle we have here to get to the low hammer, and that'll knock a black into the final section, and we can grab this dream bag. Now the thing about these is there has been a definite order of what we're supposed to do so far. The next level changes that up by throwing it into almost complete chaos. Because you are virtually surrounded on every side by springs. And there are these two bird bastards that are going to be kicking these blocks around almost at random. And even if you do manage to stop them, they're going to respawn and keep kicking the blocks around. Now. Your goal here is to simply stop one of these blocks so that you can kick it down into that gap and grab uh, one of the dream bags and then do the same to the upper right corner. This is more so just a waiting game than anything else. Because they are going to kick these blocks around. The catch is that you might want to like make sure that some of these blocks stay frozen. Not because they're going to disappear because the noggles keep respawning, but more so just out of convenience sake. Alright, kick this down, move up. Ah, uh, the power-up is blocking it. One moment. There. That wasn't so bad. But now, we move from that level to one where we don't freeze a damn thing and just have to try not to die. It's another one of those levels where we're just dodging spiky things that move along the walls. The only trick to this is just being able to tell what direction everything is going right away. And being over to time ugh, being able to time these switchovers just right. Yeah. And this can cut a little close sometimes, but as you can see, they never move along the inside track where the dream bags are. So, so long as you can just make it to at least one of them, you'll be able to make it to all of them just fine. 